Well, people with muscular dystrophy could soon see spiders in a whole new light. News 4's medical expert, Dr. Peter Ostro, shows us what doctors hope will give new hope to MD patients. Can a chemical made by a tarantula become an effective treatment for muscular dystrophy? Who would ever think that you inject some spider spit into a boy with dystrophy to make him better? Cockamamie idea. Fred Sachs is a yeah, basic so scientist. Can... He was looking for chemicals that affect the behavior of cells when they're stretched, and he found something in tarantula venom. The only thing that people tend to pay attention to is something that's very toxic in a venom, and they ignore everything else, all the hundreds of other things. Inside our muscles are millions of tiny individual muscle cells surrounded by delicate membranes. Dr. Sachs and his team studied muscle cells from mice that had muscular dystrophy. In this cell, you can see the spontaneous flashes of electrical current that show the cell's outer protective membrane is not working properly. But a compound from the tarantula changed that. And you'll see that when the drug goes in, the beating stops. It worked on cells growing in a test tube, and it worked on living mice. The behavior improved. They stood on their rear feet more often, which is a characteristic of normal mice. They identified the chemical and synthesized it, so it doesn't have to come from spiders anymore. But Rosie still gets the credit. So that's what she did for us. Now that we can synthesize the peptide, we can get large amounts, which is what you need for clinical studies. So let's do it. Let's finish the testing and get into the clinic. I would love to see a boy be able to stand up from the wheelchair and walk away. You know, there's still plenty of testing to be done, and it'll cost about $3 million to comply with all the FDA-mandated regulations, so they're trying to raise the money to do that. All the science in this project was done right here in Buffalo, and they have a collaboration with Johns Hopkins to do the testing in patients. That's real interesting. Now, how would a patient be treated? Injections or pills? Well, uh, the mice that were in the study actually had injections, but it's likely that this chemical could be taken orally. And it would have to be taken every day, but it could be combined with other medications that act differently, and that could produce combined enhanced effects. And it's not toxic at all. It's a, it's a great compound. All right, sounds good. Dr. Peter Ostro, thanks for joining us tonight.